Well, good morning, beautiful people. I um, just want to um, just share some uh, information or a message that I have received this morning that I truly believe is very beneficial to each and every one of us, um, regardless of our status, regardless of our uh, the color of our skin, regardless of you know what's going on uh, in our lives, but it applies to what's going on in our world. Okay, so so many people um, are rightfully hurt and angry. How can these atrocities continue to happen to a people who have suffered so much? I've read many posts. I've read many tweets. I've read uh, and seen different speakers on uh, different news mediums, CNN, ESPN. And in the midst of it all, you know, my question is to the Lord, why is it that the black race is so hated? And not only by the white race, but by other cultures as well. I personally have experienced racism from those who smile in my face and turn and speak negatively behind my back. And I've realized that some of the some of the reasons were because of jealousy and intimidation and also because of their own insecurities. Uh, after high school, I dated a, a, a white guy and we went to breakfast in Livonia. And when we came out of the restaurant, there was a car full of uh, young white guys and they yelled out, get back to where you come from, you black B-I-T-C-H. OK. And the guy that I was with was furious. He was furious because, you know, to him, there there was no color barriers. You know, it's just someone that he was attracted to, someone that he liked. And, you know, how dare you speak that way to not only just her, but to a woman, period. You know, um, I've had, you know, older white men uh, to speak in inappropriate ways towards me while working in corporate America. You know, um, I've also had, you know, white friends who think that it's OK to use or say N-I-G-G-E-R, you know, freely as if you know, because we're friends, you know, they get a pass in order to use the word. Now, it doesn't offend me per se, you know what I'm saying? Because my thing is, okay, we we have an understanding and they're saying it in a such as, okay, this is what I've heard someone to say, you know? Um, when we think about, you know, cultures and barriers, you know, what is it that we say behind closed doors, you know, regardless of what color you are. Um, and with all these experiences and more, I have felt betrayed, I have felt angry, and I have been hurt. But yet, in my emotions, I understand that no good thing can come from my emotions if I react as opposed to respond. And there is truly a difference with the two. So, you know, we always hear, you know, whether it's in ministry, whether it's a, a you know, a minister, a pastor, whomever, we always hear Second Chronicles 7 and 14. And I'm going, I'm going to say it, you know, um, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will hear, excuse me, heal their land. The key to Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14, is that we have to follow what God has said for us to do. Now, what I'm about to say is not favorable by any means to what's going on 
And it definitely does not give any non-Black person the okay to justify their anger, uh, their evil hatred and wickedness towards the Black race or just people of color. Dear Black people, why do we not get riled up and protest when our own people kill, fight, rape, hit, degrade, abort our own people? Where are we when we do that? We as Black people, we have been on center stage for a very long time. And we've allowed our liberties to be mocked and ridiculed and judged by our own measure. We show the world that we don't even value our own lives on social media, on reality shows, in sports, in entertainment, etc. We like literally give ourselves over to some of the things that are caused and that happen. And again, by no means am I giving a green light to the things that happen, but we as our own race, we do these things to our own people. And where are we when we, we, we should be taking a stance? When the guy in the neighborhood, the black guy in the neighborhood who can do a drive by by somebody's house that has kids because he says, oh, that that uh, N word owes me money. Or that B, you know, you know, women, they go and they say, oh, that B, she did this. She stole my man. You know, what I'm saying the stupidities of things that we ourselves allow in our own communities to occur. When do we take a stance on that? And again, I'm not degrading or by any means belittling anything that's been going on. But I'm just saying, like, first, we need to talk to our own house. We need to make it plain in our own communities what it is that we are doing to ourselves. So this way we can show and give examples of how we are to overcome. How are we to demand and command respect and honor for our children? for our husbands, for our sons, for our daughters, for our grandparents, for our mothers, for our fathers, for our future generations. If we are not taking a stance and showing by example in our own communities how we want and deserve to be treated because we are worthy. God created everybody. He created us because we are all unique in our own way. He is the one who created us with this beautiful brown skin, beautiful of many shades. We sell ourselves out because we don't value ourselves enough to not be used as pawns, nor to sell out for the almighty dollar. We can go, you know, when I when I watch different reality shows and I see, you know, whether it's basketball wives or, you know, football wives or the real house wives of wherever they're from, you know, and all the degrading, all the demeaning that we speak in our own communities. And this is entertainment. That is what's considered entertainment. When do we take a stance? When do we stand up? So we must understand that what is going on is truly a spiritual war. Satan has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy all mankind. So whomever he chooses to use because of that person 
allowing themselves to be open to Satan, the enemy of all mankind, then that is the direction in which people go. I know that many of you don't want to hear this. You may not want to acknowledge it, but this is truly a war and it cannot and will not be won in the flesh or in the natural. Because again, this is a spiritual war. Why is it so hard for us to understand this? We, the people, do not have to sit back and allow these monstrous things to happen to our culture, to our families, to our community. We don't have to sit back and watch it happen. To be quite honest with you, this is not even a black thing or a white thing, nor a color issue. It is, again, a spiritual war where Satan has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This is about souls. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, which is a high place ruled by a prince, such as the prince of Persia that is spoken about in the book of Daniel, for when Daniel prayed, his prayers, the answers were held up in the heavenlies because of the prince of Persia, the enemy that was holding it up from coming to pass. And so the archangels, Michael and Gabrielle, had to go and fight. It's a spiritual war, you all. We wrestle not again against powers in high places belonging to a hierarchy. And next, rulers of darkness in this world, the satanic rule. And lastly, there are spiritual wickedness in high places. Again, the satanic rule who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have had dreams that seems so real to me about ascending up so far into the heavenlies and going into a dark place where there is demonic activity and going to reach to, to get in contact with the stronghold, the strong man that is over different territories, different regions and things of that nature to pull down the, 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 the plots and the schemes that the enemy has set up for our world, for mankind. Again, this is a spiritual war. The scripture goes on to speak about putting on the whole armor of God that ye may be able mm, to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. My beautiful people, God's word is our weapon. Praise and worship is our weapon. Repentance mm, is our weapon. Forgiveness is our weapon. God also says in Romans 12 and 19, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give, uh, give place unto wrath. For it is written that vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. If you have read and if you read what the Bible says and actually try the word, then you will understand that God's power and his word is greater than that of, of the enemy. The book of Psalms shares so many prayers of King David, who was a man after God's own heart. He talked about how God had would uh would deliver him from his enemies. 
and the Lord would heal, hear him, excuse me, and he actually delivered him from his enemies. So where are we speaking up? Where are we praying? Where are we declaring and decreeing the word of God in the earth? My people, my people, you. Again, this is not a color issue. This is a spiritual war. This is something that is going on in the heavenlies above your head. I always talk about always beyond the sky's limit. Because there are there are different there are different realms in the spirit in which we live in because of how the, the operation of the spiritual world works. And I dare you to get closer to God. I dare you to get on your knees. I dare you to get on your knees. I dare I dare you to throw up your hands. I dare you to speak out. I dare you to cry out. I dare you. I dare you to do it and watch and see what God will do with the anger and the hurt that's built up on the inside of you. I dare you to go before him and plead your cause against an ungodly nation and watch what God will do for you and for everybody. The Bible says that if one can chase a thousand, then two can chase 10,000. If we collectively come together, what is it that we cannot do? When are you going to take a stance in the spiritual realm, come out of your flesh and plead, plead the cause, plead it, plead it. Plead it! Plead it! Our country, our people, humankind, this is a soul issue. This is a spiritual war. This doesn't have anything to do with our color. It doesn't have anything to do with our race. It is a spiritual war. We are doing our own selves a disjustice. The people, we cannot sit back and just watch. We cannot, we have to open up our mouths, but we have to speak God's word. What is God's word saying? What does his word say? He says that he will avenge our enemies. He said to repent. He said to turn our face towards him, towards him, towards him. That is what he has called for us to do. <laughs> Tell God about your hurts. Tell him about your pain. Tell him about your struggles. Tell him about your anger. He knows, but he's waiting. God does not want this to be happening. He didn't create the world, the earth for all of this to be happening. God is a just God. And you better believe me on that. I have personally seen God move on my behalf regarding my enemies. And those who come up against me, when you commune with God, <clears throat> when you walk with God, when you sit at your creator's feet, he is with you at all times. In Genesis, it says in the beginning, God created us. He created all my mankind in his image. He has given us dominion. But remember, we are born in the flesh, but reborn in the spirit. Therefore, we must operate in the spirit of God to manifest the spiritual things in the earth. Beautiful people, do not be discouraged and be not dismayed. Ask God for forgiveness and repent and turn from your evil ways. Talk to God, 
Praise God for what you have asked him for. Praise him for what he's already done in your life. Continual praise. Praise him. Thank him at all times because of your gratitude towards him. Many of us have been in situations where we could have almost died. We could have almost died, but God spared our souls, our very lives, so that we could go forth and do his bidding. We need to grow deeper with our relationship with Christ and watch him work. <clears throat> Psalms 34 and 8, it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man, woman, mankind that trusts in him. Psalms 149 says, <clears throat> and I'll be ending this. It says, praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Mm. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, I got it on Shaya. Praise God. Praise Him. <laughs> praise Him. No, just praise God. Turn to the true and living God. It's time to do it. What else do you want to lose? What else do you want to lose? <laughs> what else do you have to lose? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so that is all. That was on my heart. That is what the Lord gave me this morning. <sighs> oh, goodness. So, Lord, I just thank you right now, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for those who are watching, have watched, will watch later, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, ah, yes, God, mm, that you will be upon each and every person. Father God, I thank you for your blood, oh God. I thank you for your blood, oh God, your cleansing blood, Father God, that it will go forth, Lord God, and permeate through the bodies and souls of each and every person, oh God. And I just thank you, oh God. Yes, my I thank you, Lord God, that you hear the cry of your people. Oh, God. And that you will heal our land, Father. So, Father, I just thank you, oh God. Let there not be any retaliation against us, oh God. Let not the enemy, Lord God, be able to set up any traps for no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that every person that goes against your agenda, Lord God, that you shall deal with them, Lord God. Yes, God, because we belong to you, oh God. We are your people, Father God. And we just thank you and we love you and we glorify you and magnify you and give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs>